as I read these passages, I'm going to show you exactly how I start to think about it. And I'm not going to just read the entire thing. I'm going to have little moments of thought throughout the reading process. That's how I do this on the real test. That's how you should do it as well. Researchers recently found that disruptions to an enjoyable experience, like a short series of advertisements during a television show, often increase viewers' reported enjoyment. So just words like increase and decrease, any sort of numerical word makes me want to draw some arrows, some ups and downs on my scratch paper. So what are they saying? They're saying disruptions cause an increase in enjoyment. Right now, there's lots of ways to do that. I'm just using some letters here. So, okay, fine. Uh, but there you go. Enjoyment and disruptions. So I have the actual words in the passage if I need them. So do whatever you need to do to abbreviate it to be able to recognize what you're talking about. But the key is I've got disruptions, increase, enjoyment. Very simply in my dumb summary now. Let's continue. Suspecting that disruptions to an unpleasant experience would have the opposite effect. So new effect, right? So there's a, a, a different thing here. Here, we're saying that disruptions would decrease enjoyment. And we can start to be like, okay, let's, let's add a little bit more, right? They were talking about a pleasant experience here. Here, they're talking about a bad experience, right? So this is the benefit of using the scratch paper as opposed to the annotations in the Blue Book app is you can draw smiley faces, you can do whatever you want, and it's much easier to just like be flexible than it is on typing on a computer and a keyboard. So okay, disruptions would decrease the enjoyment, so that's probably it. Now notice they don't actually say that, right? They say it has the opposite effect. Because I have these ups and downs arrows, I can very easily show the opposite effect, right? The researchers have participants listened to construction noise for 30 minutes and anticipated that those whose listening experience was frequently interrupted with short breaks of silence would thus lose enjoyment, right? I, I can see where this is going because they're basically just summarizing in, or putting into better words, I guess, my own summary. So let's see. A, find the disruptions more irritating as time went on. That seems good. Let's continue. Rate the listening experience as more negative, that seems good, than those whose listening experience was uninterrupted. So we got two choices that might work. That's okay, no need to panic, we'll keep going. Rate the experience of listening to construction noise as lasting for less time than it actually lasted. Well, there might be a version of that choice where you can kind of like tell the story and be like, okay, if it lasted for less time, then that's because I perceived the enjoyment and the enjoyment affected how I perceived the experience and the passage of time. Uh, I don't know, right? So you shouldn't have to do that. Anytime you start forcing a choice in, that's probably a bad sign for that choice. They never really talked about how long it lasted. And time is a common trap on the SAT passage questions. It's not always wrong, but if they're talking about time and a choice, they better be talking about time in the passage. So I don't really remember that. It's not about how long people perceived or how long it actually went. It's, it's not about that. So C is definitely wrong here. D, perceive the volume of the construction noise as growing softer over time. That I think is more obviously wrong. There's no common trap about volume on the SAT, but this is a case where we're bringing up something that just wasn't mentioned. So not a good sign. Now here, if we were just listening to what I said <laughs> and you understand how SAT traps work, the answer is obvious. It's very clearly B because what does choice A do? It talks about time, right? It talks about time. This is not about how the enjoyment changed over time. Notice, neither is our dumb summary, right? Our arrows do not involve time. It talks about increases and decreases in enjoyment based on the presence of disruptions, not how long the disruptions last, not how late we are in the experience as to how those disruptions affect the experience. It is purely a higher and lower just overall experience. So A is inserting time into this. I also don't love that irritating is a more specific word, right? That's a stronger word than the very weak uh, word negative here, right? There's lots of ways for an experience to be negative versus there's only, you know, irritating is more specific, right? It's a version of negative, but it, it's not the only version. So that worries me. It's not as bad as the time thing in A, but it worries me. But I do think it probably makes some people fall for that trap because they like that it is more specific. And this is something you gotta get over if you wanna do well in the SAT. Uh, weak answers, vague answers are more likely to be correct in many cases because they take out the stuff that, that makes it like a good answer in your English class, right? When your English teacher asks you to interpret a poem or a passage or a novel or whatever, that teacher wants you to be specific, wants you to provide details. And so you interpret that as a vague answer is a bad answer. It means that you probably didn't do your homework and you're faking it. But on the SAT, vague answers are often very, very good because they, they don't stand out. And the SAT doesn't want us to kind of like, you know, 
to have the answer be obvious, they want us to work for it. So something like B doesn't bother me being more weak, more kind of vague. It's, it's, it's actually what makes it more likely to be right in my eyes. Now, the one problem with B I will talk about that a lot of people have trouble with is this idea of um, a comparison, right? It's more negative than those whose listening experience was uninterrupted. And you're like, well, they didn't talk about that in the passage. And I kind of agree, but I do feel like this is where the inference part of these inference questions comes in, right? It's very strongly implied at the beginning. Researchers recently found that disruptions to an enjoyable experience, like a short series of advertisements during a television show, often increase viewers' reported enjoyment. How can you increase enjoyment compared to what, right? It has to be compared to something, right? So it's implied in that sentence that it's the disruptions are increasing enjoyment compared to not having the disruptions. That That's literally just like how science works is you have two groups and you compare how the groups interact, you know, or, or, or are, re, are changed by a particular stimulus, you know. So this is very fundamental to science and it's strongly implied by the passage. So we are literally just flipping that first sentence and saying, okay, if you had two groups, one had construction noise interrupted, one didn't, what would be the result? Well, the, the, the disruptions would decrease the enjoyment for, um, I guess, the, the, the construction noise, as crazy as this is. So um, I, I don't know if this is even true. I don't care. But it's a great example of how taking the idea and simplifying it very quickly can turn it into a much easier rest of the passage, right? Because once they told me to do the opposite effect, I was able to literally just flip an arrow around. So these ups and downs are very, very good for us. And I notice very quickly when I'm reading a passage that's gonna involve that scratch paper strategy because it usually involves words like increase or decrease or some sort of numerical word. So look out for that and as soon as you see it, grab your paper and pencil and start doing it old school, write it down.